just a little over a month ago, you guys cut your outlook. Uh, it did quite a lot of damage on the share price front. And it was because some big customers had really slowed down their ordering of flavors and fragrances. Why is that? Because talking to the big companies here, everyone seems very bullish about the, the market and the outlook for goods. Yeah. What we see right now is that, that uh, some of our customers are not growing as fast as uh, they probably have wished for. But what we see in, in our R&D facilities is that more and more uh, of our customers are showing up looking for innovation to reinvigorate actually their, their growth. What we see in our business is uh, very strong on the HBC and beauty business. Here we have really solid growth uh, in the, let's say, mid, mid single, single digits. And we saw a little bit of a, of a different uh, story on the, on, the, on the taste side, but uh, we believe that we'll come back in the second half of the year. Now one of the hot topics in taste and, and indeed at this conference is plant-based proteins, fake meat, whatever you want to call them, you know, Beyond Meat, Impossible Burger, etc. That seems like an area that you are very well positioned to take advantage of. Obviously, a lot of it is around flavoring and texturizing fake meat. Um, how do you play into that firstly? And then I would love your view on how big you think that space is going to get. So, ab absolutely, plant-based uh, uh, meat products is becoming more and more important. I, I would say it started here in the U.S. and we talked about Beyond Meat, for example. And you see that there's a good demand for it. You see more products coming on. Now it goes even into the chicken space. We see from the global perspective that Western Europe is just becoming interested in it as well. And we just had a win in, uh, in Brazil. So you see it's becoming a, a bit of a global trend. We believe it can be eventually very big because if you look at from the sustainability uh, point of view, uh, we can't feed the world with uh, meat, chicken and fish any, any longer with a growing population. So you need different sources of protein and plant-based protein, it's a very, very good solution. Our role in it is it to help our customers to design the products, to find the right flavors, which you and me really likes, and find the right texture that, that you really like, like to eat it as well. So eventually, it can be a pretty, pretty big, big product going forward. You don't think it's one of these things that's going to be a sort of fad for a year or two, and then we're just going to go back to eating our you know, steak and pork? And no, I, 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 I don't think so, because with a growing population around the globe, it's just the demand for an alternative protein source. Okay. Um, let's talk about deals for a moment. You obviously did the Futurum deal. That yep. was a significant deal for the company, um, integrated mostly now. Uh, there are some other assets out in the market that you have been linked with. Uh, I think of the Dow, Biosciences, Business and Nutrition. Is that one that would potentially be of interest? Well, right now, we are very focused on the integration of Food Room still. We have to make sure that we execute very well, that we find the right cost savings, and we are on a very, very good, good pass. We just announced that we increased our numbers in terms of uh, synergy saving from 35 million to 40 million for, for this year. Uh, and we really have to make sure that we capitalize on the cross-selling to sell some of their adjacent businesses into our legacy customers and vice versa. We believe that could be a lot of value creation going forward. Value creation means more firepower to go and do other deals. So yeah, that's true. Would, would, would that business, because that's that looks like a good fit on paper. Yeah, it, it, it's a good business, uh, but timing is, is important here as well.